Well, with Laurie Hooper and Eric Corkish, we're just outside Timwald after getting to question 21, which I wasn't sure we are going to get to one stage. The saga carries on about the, the buses, and you were asking these very interesting questions there to the Minister. I mean, did you get the answers you expected? I, I, well, I got, the reason I asked the questions was because of the answers that I'd seen already been provided. And so, yes, I got exactly the answers I was expecting. They weren't the answers I was hoping for, if I'm being perfectly honest, other than the Minister making a, uh, what seemed to me to be a very firm commitment to sort this problem out as quickly as he could. Um, I didn't really get the, the confidence that the reason this has all happened in the first place, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. Well, let's go back through part of it. I mean, the, the trial took place. You were the person, Eric, that took the trial. Yeah. And were you safe? Were you wobbling? around was the thing moving at any time well I was the only one doing the trial and with the journeys I was doing it was over a five month period that worked out I did 250 journeys on a bus now the minister has just said that my buggy moved on two occasions where did he get that information from because it didn't happen in all 250 journeys my buggy did not move one inch I never had anything from a driver, I never had anything from the inspectors I've spoke to, so where has that figure come from? It is not true. And also, it says that they can carry it when it's safe, with a restraint. My buggy automatically locks as soon as you take the key out, and it will not move. You cannot move it, the wheels are locked. And he's told about restraints, there is no restraints on the bus. Electric wheelchairs are turning up, going onto that bus. I've got nothing against electric wheelchairs. They are not restrained. There is no strap. People are going on on prams with babies in, and they're not restrained either. And there was a picture I took last week, and my buggy is smaller than the pram. The weight of my buggy is less than an electric wheelchair. So where has he got that figure from? Well, you, 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 you know, you're pushing him on, on things, and he was saying that speeds of buses, of like in London, are going at 8 miles, 12 miles an hour. Here, they're going up to 50 miles an hour, because this is the same system, isn't it? The same buses, basically. I think you've got that. Yeah, well I, I think, I think the, the challenge that the Minister has, really, is that this, in the UK, they have a, a scheme which is kind of rolled out for loads of different bus companies across all the sorts of parts of the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and so saying, well, actually, we're different to London, yeah, but are we different to Essex or, or Surrey or are loads of the other rural areas in the UK that also operate these similar schemes? And the reality is that if Eric was living in the UK, he probably would be allowed on one of their buses, yeah. similar kind of buses. In fact, some of them are the same buses, I believe, that we use over here, the Mercedes-style buses. Mm -hmm. So the, that, that's what doesn't stack up here. So I feel there's got to be something underneath all of this. Well, it also doesn't stack up. He just said that no, it never moved, and, and they're saying it did move, and, and, and no one's talked to you about it. Well, the, other, the other thing that he said was that if a Class 2 buggy could be carried safely within the requirements, then they would carry it. My buggy is well within side the limits. Off the top of my head, I think it's 1,200 long, minus 850. So it's well within the limits. So according to him, the minister, I should be able to get on that bus tomorrow because my buggy is within the limits. It has lockable wheels, so it's perfectly safe. They have lied about it moving twice. So therefore, I can go down to the bus station tomorrow and get on the bus. And if you don't let me on, I'll be parked in front of it again. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. Your demo never aired yet. I know BBC, Max Radio were filming it. I think BBC have said they are waiting for the whole story. So that They're waiting right. because they didn't get a proper response from the DOI. Yeah. Uh, so now they are going to use it because they've had the word from the Minister. Even if somebody is feeding the Minister wrong information. What are you going to, well, are you going to keep going at this? Well, th my job in this really is just to make sure that Eric's voice is heard in mm. this, and I think, well, to be fair, he's doing a pretty good job of that himself. Um, so I, I think, to be honest, what I'm taking away from this morning is the Minister has clearly said if these buggies can be carried legally and safely, he will make sure it happens. And so I'm taking away from this that he's going to make sure that this happens. And if not, you're going to park in front of the buses again? I'm going to get on the bus tomorrow in Douglas, because he's just said I can. My buggy is safe. It's within the limits. It's locked. It can't move. He can't keep me off the bus. And if he does, I'm going to sit in front of it again. And if he wants to call the police again, he can. But that's what I'm going to do. He has cleared me today by the statement he made. And 
I've also heard a statement that he has given to somebody else to say that the floor of the bus isn't strong enough to carry a mobility buggy. My buggy weighs less than an electric wheelchair. Where we're standing now is the area that my buggy would be parked in. And if you take us three as average people, how many stone are we talking about there? 36 stone? My buggy doesn't weigh 36 stone, so how, how is that going to fall through the floor? It's just another lie. Before we finish, just to clarify, you're standing up now and everything, so do you need to use that buggy? I mean, is it a lifeline? Can you get around without it? If you look at the way I'm standing now, right, I'm standing there on a false leg, my other leg, partly because of the stroke that I had last week, and some of that must be down to the worry and stress over this, I cannot go without my scooter. My walking distance without being in pain or not being able to get back it's 200 yards, 200 metres, whatever you want to say. Right? And if I, if I go now, I can't go down Strand Street and shop. You know, and one, one of the things, the main thing with the bus is that when I was coming back from the NSC, which I'm using because the government tell you to keep fit, I was coming back from the NSC, the bus does not go back to the bus station. It stops in Victoria Street and you have to get off there. And I would get off with my uh, scooter go up Duke Street and get the bus. I can't walk that far now, so I can't go. You know, it's physically impossible for me to walk that distance. You know, so I don't know what they're playing at. OK, well, we'll put this out straight away, and if people want to see anything tomorrow, what bus are you getting on, what time? I'm not going to say, because, oh, okay. because last time I went down the bus station, sat there, which was last week, and all of a sudden I had somebody from their head office standing next to me to report back what I was doing. You're getting intimidated then? That was intimidation, yeah. Do you think he's getting intimidated? I, I think Eric is a very difficult man to intimidate, to be honest. Uh, he's, clearly, uh, he's clearly right about all this, to be honest. This isn't a quality issue, if nothing else. The whole purpose of passing the Equality Act was to yeah. say it doesn't matter uh, who you are or whether you have any physical disabilities or not, you should be able to access government services equally. Yeah. And I think that's really what's not happening here, is government, for some reason, is saying, actually, that does matter. You heard the, the minister in there say people should make the right choice when it comes to their mobility aid. Well, that, that actually goes against the entire purpose of the Equality Act, saying actually it's not about being told what you can and can't do, it's about saying we're going to make sure that our services are accessible for everyone. Sure. I'm, I'm going to continue with it, and um, I'm not going to say the person's name who works in the Cabinet Office, I sent her an email but she's been liaising with me over this uh, Equality Act. Now, so far it's all just been done by talking and trying to get Boss Bannon to cooperate or the DOI to cooperate, I've sent her an email last night telling her that I now want to make this as a formal complaint and go to the Equalities Tribunal. I think we've had enough messing around now. You know, I've, I've been now, what, month, month, six weeks since I've been able to use a bus. So I wanted now to go, unless the DOI changed their mind and allowed me on that bus, I wanted to go to a tribunal. And I hope they realise the financial consequences if they lose, because there is large sums of money for people who have been discriminated against.